let's have a talk that is a little scary. It's scary, but we have to talk about it. So Kamala Harris is out there on the campaign trail right now. And it's easy to sit and make fun of Kamala Harris. Lord knows I mock Dome every day, all day, as often as humanly possible. In this little clip we're about to play you right here of a bunch of word salad nonsense has been making the rounds. She sits down, she talks like this. Remember his number? 32. Today we got 32 days until the election. <laughs> So 32 days, 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right, 32 days. And we know we will do it. And, and this is gonna be a very tight race until the very end. This is going to be a very tight race until the very end. We are the underdog, and we know we have some hard work ahead. All right. Mr. Producer, I know it was a little long. I want you to get that, seg that, that a little clip ready again because we're going to do a little experiment here. Obviously, as you could tell, the teleprompter went down. The teleprompter went down, and Kamala Harris had no idea what to say and just sat there awkwardly repeating 32 days, 32 days, 32 days. Okay, that in and of itself is hilarious, and it's eye-popping, and it's all those things. I, I, I get all that, but think about this. Kamala Harris is almost 60 years old. The teleprompter went down on her for, what was that, 30 seconds? This woman has been a politician for her entire adult life for her entire adult life this woman has stood up in front of people sometimes it's a little room sometimes it's a big stadium for her entire adult life this woman has stood in front of people and delivered speeches and so it would i mean you would assume that that would be kind of something that just muscle memory wise she could do Right? Aren't you good at something? Whatever you've done for a profession, or maybe you're a homemaker. I'd look if you maybe you're a homemaker. Do you need to really sit and focus? Do you need an instruction manual to make spaghetti? To uh, get the pasta ready? No, you're laughing right now if that's what you do. It's something you could probably do in your sleep. Maybe you have. If you are, if you go to work, whatever you do, maybe you're a mechanic or a lawyer, whatever you do. There are certain things that just, you've done them for so long, you can do them. Kamala Harris has been doing this forever. So why can't she do it? Well, this goes to the scary part of what I'm going to say. Once you stop being a merit-based society, this goes way beyond Kamala Harris and the presidential campaign and everything else. Once you decide merit, is not what you should seek out, not what you should reward, but instead other things, you know, race, gender, and all this other DEI crap and a million other things. Once you go down the non-merit path, well, it's not just a one-step thing. Merit takes your entire society this way. Anything other than merit takes your entire society this way. So as we watch the video again, and we will in a moment, I want you to digest this. You're watching a woman almost 60 years old who's been in the profession for decades who doesn't know anything about it. She doesn't really know anything about anything. She is a moron. I'm not even saying that IQ-wise. IQ-wise, maybe her mind works great. Maybe she was born with an IQ of 300. I don't know. But for all intents and purposes now, this is an almost 60-year-old woman who doesn't know anything about anything. She's a moron. Now, that in and of itself would be frightening enough if you just thought, well, okay, she might be the next president. That's really scary. But as you watch this video a second time, I'm going to explain something to you. The society that chose to leave merit behind and go this way, it wasn't just politics. Our legal profession has gone this way. Our medical profession has gone this way. Air traffic controllers, this way. Auto manufacturers, this way. 
industry after industry, culture after culture, down the path that is not the merit path. So as you watch the possibly next president of the United States of America freeze up like a deer in the headlights when the teleprompter goes out for 35 seconds, I want you to sit and imagine this. This is your doctor. This is your lawyer. This is your pilot now. And this is what happens when you allow this DEI cultural Marxist filth to infect every single part of your society. Watch this. Welcome to your new judge in your next legal case. Remember his number? 32. Today we got 32 days until the election. <laughs> So 32 days, 32 days. Okay, we got some business to do. We got some business to do. All right, 32 days. And we know we will do it. And, and this is gonna be a very tight race until the very end. This is going to be a very tight race until the very end. We are the underdog, and we know we have some hard work ahead. I remember an article came out a couple months back from one of the major medical schools. Of course, one of these medical schools completely infected with DEI field. No, 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 we can't let him in. His score was too high. No, we don't have enough black people. Let's get more trannies in here, one of those medical schools. And they did a survey, the majority of the students making their way through the medical school still couldn't identify major arteries in the body. What you're watching is not just an infection that has destroyed our politics and our political leaders. We have morons who have risen to the highest, most influential positions of power in this country, and they don't know anything about anything. When you watch Kamala Harris deliver a word salad answer on the Call Her Daddy podcast, I know, how weird is that name? I didn't think about Kamala Harris. I thought, please tell me this guy isn't piloting my next commercial airline flight. I'm curious, like you don't do too many long form interviews. What made you wanna do Call Her Daddy today? Well, I think you and your listeners have really got this thing right, which is one of the best ways to communicate with people is to be real, you know, and to talk about the things that people really care about. I mean, what I love about what you do is that your voice and in, in your show is really about your listeners. And I think especially now, this is a moment in the country and in life where people really want to know they're seen and heard and, and that they're part of a community that they're not out there alone. And, um, and so I'm really glad to be with you. This is why we must go back to being a merit-based society. We have to stop trying to be equal. Nobody's equal. You're not equal to me. I'm not equal to you. No human being is equal to another. We're all built different, different gifts. Let's drop this childish nonsense, equality, equity, all this stuff. No more diversity, no more none of that. Go out there and be the best, no matter who you are. That's not a cruel way to run a society. It's the only way to run a society. Unless, of course, you want your society run by dullards, like that human being right there, who may very well be the next president of the United States of America. Probably made you uncomfortable too, but I still am right. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.